Uh, my name is Scott Benefield. I'm an uh, artist who lives outside of Seattle. Uh, I have my studio there, but I've been coming to Northern Ireland for the past uh, six years. Um, my name is Andrea Spencer, and I'm currently based in Randallstown, and I've had my studio there for the past three years. My name is Sean Campbell, and I currently live in Kinloch, in County Leitrim, but my studio is in Balik in Northern Ireland. I've been there for six years now. So the idea was that the three of us um, wanted to form um, a collective in Glass and um, each of us works um, very differently within the same medium. So we're coming f we're, what we wanted our show to uh, demonstrate is the versatility of, of the medium of glass through the three different approaches of kiln forming, flame working and glass blowing. The, the technique that I use to make my work is, is glass blowing. Uh, from the furnace, and that's um, sort of as distinct from, say, glass blowing over a torch, uh, the way Andrea works. And that's uh, working from a, you know, a 200 kilo pot of molten glass, and then drawing it out of the furnace with a blowpipe, and using very old, sort of traditional glass blowing techniques to, um, to form the material. Yeah, so I, the difference with the way I'm blowing the glass is and solid forming it as well as I'm working with a bench torch. So I would, my raw materials, I would start with glass tube or a solid glass rod and then manipulate that through the heat and either um, to blow it out as a hollow form or to solid work it. And my work is uh, kiln formed work. So I use a large uh, flat bed kiln which basically like the same as a ceramic process, but I take sheet glass and powdered fritz the glasses in a, in a painterly manner. I, I'll draw with the, the fritz and powders onto a, a canvas of, of clear glass, put that into the kiln, melt the glass basically around about 800 degrees. It'll go in and out of the kiln several times. And as I build up layer upon layer, I'll create the imagery and the painting that's contained within the material. Unlike where Scott's work would be very exciting to watch in the hot glass, everybody really is quite aware of it. And it's a, it's a dance in a way. The, uh, the kiln forming can be a little bit dull to watch, but it gets the job done in another way. There's a wide diversity of aesthetic within glass as a material. And that's part of what this show is about, really. But um, it, can be, it can be anything. It really can do absolutely anything. But I, but I think each of these techniques have certain inherent strengths uh, and, and weaknesses that you can exploit. For instance, Sean's work in a kiln can achieve a scale that's just impossible to do with either glass blowing or flame working. Andrea's flame working can have a level of detail, sort of small scale detail, that I can't do blowing from you know, a blowpipe and these sort of large hand tools. I think the point and the purpose of the show was to demonstrate the, the range and the versatility of, uh, of glass when it's applied to artistic purposes. The, the major piece that I'm showing in this exhibition is a, is a piece called Albion, and it's a grouping of, um, I think, about a, a dozen or more uh, vessel forms that kind of echo uh, each other. It's a, a lot of permutations on, a, on sort of this bullet-shaped form, which is a, a hollow vessel, which is traditionally what... Um, glass blowing, I mean how it developed, but they're also non-functional in, in the sense that they can't really be used as containers, the traditional use of blown glass. Uh, and I was interested in using that as a format to explore different, um, different ways of, of getting pattern and, uh, and uh, small decorative detail into the surface of blown glass. And they're all derived from traditional Italian uh, ways of working with cane and marini as a, a glass pattern. So, as you'll see shortly, um, uh, it's it, and that sort of came out of my experience as a, a, a teacher at these workshops where I'd have to demonstrate these various techniques of, of uh, generating patterns. So the idea was to pull this all together in, in one piece. Yeah, so for the 3x3 three three show here in Crafts and I, because um, we have had it previously down in the Signal Arts Centre, but this time I decided to focus more on pedestal pieces. So um, I've been working with a form now for a while that's based on a, a natural form called the Mermaid's Purse. 
and previously I've been making those as suspended pieces or wall pieces, but for this exhibition I have been looking more at putting them inside environments and containing them within boxes and either camouflaging the fauny environment or um, laying it open and um, sort of laying it out uh, to be looked at almost like um, collected items. So what I'm excited about with this show is I've moved the form forward by adding colour into it, whereas previously I've been working a lot with clear glass. So I have two main uh, bodies of work in the show. One titled Sentinel is a large human scale slab of glass. Um, it's based on standing stones of, of Ireland um, and it acts as a watchman. So it's, it's there to simply observe what's going on in the, in, in the world today. Um, and I use that uh, to then inform the rest of my work. And the second range of work are wall-mounted panels, which very much come from a, a, a painterly background. Um, it's ab abstract work. Um, the issues that the sentinels range, that the issues that the sentinels raise, they then that inspires me to go and look at them in a little bit more detail. And the uh, the the wall panels then just allow me to really dig deep into what's going on there and my emotions about it and, and what I feel about it. People do think of glass as a, as a very fragile medium, but it's tremendously strong. I mean, they build whole buildings out of it. So I don't, I don't necessarily think of it as a terribly fragile material. But that element of risk that's sort of there about you know the, the outcome of, of what you're working on, I think that's... Uh, you know, that's the exciting part about uh, working with a material like that because that element of, of sort of risk and, and uh, that, the, that the success of the outcome is never uh, really assured, that's what sort of makes it interesting and challenging uh, from my point of view as a, as a maker. Yeah, and I guess the other thing I suppose with working uh, with glass using heat to manipulate it means there's a s you can only touch it so far unlike clay you can get in and uh, you know form it and you sort of know more or less what you're going to come out with whereas once you start involving the heat there's a certain amount of um, um, chance. distance from the work and chance so yes so there is that which again can be an exciting part of the process it can be a frustrating part of the process you can work on something spend many hours working on something that would be quite labor intensive and then just through either a technical issue or some some other reason you know you could lose the piece through cracks or anything like that but um but again sometimes that can throw up unusual things that you can manipulate in your work okay yeah no there can be a challenging material as well as a wonderful one but i don't think there's any significant disasters have occurred i think the perception of frag fragility is probably an interesting one that most of us would play around with. It's one of the values of the material that we that we would work with, but it is, as Scott says, a very strong material. Part of the reason that we we sort of came together to try to mount exhibitions like this was that we wanted to give uh, sort of studio glass as opposed to sort of glass as an industrial material or uh, a higher profile in Northern Ireland. 